They call me an outlaw. I'm a five-time world MMA champion who's fought in the cage for the last 20 years. I've taken my share of hits, but nothing keeps me down. I live life in the fast lane, and I surround myself with a group of individuals that can keep up with me. Together, we own this town. They call me an outlaw, and they're right. My name is Maverick, this is my world. San Pedro, California, the birthplace of no holes bar fighting, and my home for the last 17 years. I've done quite a lot in this city, and a lot of people recognize me as a familiar face. What's up, my boys? I gotta get back to the gym today. You guys ready to ride and do this? Let's roll. Cool, because today, I got something special to show you. So today I was about to do what we call the Flying Jesus on a bike that shouldn't be doing nothing even close to flying anything. What you do on a street bike is called a trick, and what you do on a Harley is called gambling with death. Any little rock, crevice, movement, slightest little breath wrong is gonna make that front end shake and I'm going end over end. Just another day in Maverick's world. This year we opened up one of the biggest facilities ever, Maverick's Ultimate Training Center. We wanted to appeal to all the masses. You know, if you can walk in the door, we can train you. Before it was really hardcore, blood in your face, knuckles in your nose, fighting gym to learn how to fight. And now we're bringing in things like Pilates. So we have to have a multi-diverse type gym where everybody's coming. Women, children, pregnant ladies, men, you name it, they're coming here. You know, teaching kids here at Mavericks is a whole different experience for me. It's like, you know, I have a son of my own, he's eight, and what I teach him and what I teach these kids at the gym, it's a lot of the same guidelines, but these little kids at the gym are just out of control, completely out of control. I probably have got the worst kids in the neighborhood that the parents cannot control at all, so they bring them and dump them off to me, and it's a lot of discipline, and it's a lot of, uh, bottom line is the fear factor at first. I'm looking at them like, this is not the YMCA. Your mom and dad are gone and you're gonna listen whether you like it or not. You know, and that wakes them up a lot. So the youngest kid that I have is a little girl. She started out, she was four years old. And that little girl can bang, trust me. So I'm not teaching self-defense here at Mavericks. These kids are learning full-blown combination, elbow strikes, knees, ground and pound, aggressive submissions. I mean, I'm teaching them the real deal. This is no holds bar Maverick World Training. Period. So you got the schedule all squared away, right? Yes. So you understand everybody's cool on that as far as what's going on. Marla is the general manager. She runs it. She tries to keep me in balance. I want to, I want to do it on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7:30 after the regular class okay. to, to fill in the time slot before your advanced class mm -hmm. at 8:30 on those okay. three days. And then yeah, the Wednesday, like okay, did they get the flyers out and start advertising that or what, what's going on with that? What have you guys done with that? I printed up some new flyers and um, we start putting some on the cars and there's, here's, you know, some. Well, get a list of the areas that you guys hit, you know, and, and have right. them so they don't go over the same damn areas every time. Well, you know, you know, we Maverick want to can be very intense. Over the years I've learned, you know, step back and not take things personally because I have to take care of the members and, and make sure that they're happy and they get what they pay All for. Right. All right, mama. All right, get to work, make money. So besides running the gym, I do repos for my friend Pete in South Bay Pringle. So every time I come in to see Pete, he gives me a list of repossessions. The list of repossessions he can't get. Is that the dad? I, uh, I guess, yeah. Did you try calling him? He's dead, he's on my call. Oh, he's dead. Something just not jiving to me. There's something fishy about the whole thing. Let me try this shit. This This is a message from Miss Colleen Brady. This is Mr. Von Houck. I'm calling you in regards to the silver Mercedes. Um, be advised, your monthly installment has not been received from South Bay Prehome, the financier and lien holder on the vehicle. Your car is up for collection today. We will be repossessing the car. 
and it will be picked up today. Your best concern is to contact um, South Bay Prehom to try to resolve this. Hey Mark, can you uh, low jack this address for me so I can drive straight to it? Do we by any chance have the key to that one? No? Shit. All right, let's get her address and go see this shit. So the job would be go try to find a car that physically is not being able to found, and once you do find it, with no keys, figure out how you're gonna get it back here in one piece. I'm gonna use my own style of finding addresses and cross-referencing things. But in the meantime, I'll try to get her on the phone and see if I can locate where she's at. Sure enough, she answers. Colleen, please. This is Mr. Von Hauck. We own the pink slip and title to your car via through South Bay pre-owned, but unfortunately your vehicle has not been paid on, so we are picking up the car today. You didn't know that you didn't pay your car payment for three months? Some people just love to give me the runaround, but they don't understand. I've been running around this world a lot longer than they've been not paying for this damn car. You, my advice to you is to return your car until you can get caught up with it. Well, I'm telling you, I, I'm the guy that's going to be picking up your car in about 30 minutes. You have my number. Good. I think you should. If you got money to pay for attorney, you should pay your car payment. Yeah, you got it right. Have a good day. <laughs> you see how people try to come up with just bullshit? Oh, I can't wait to get this car now. So after this conversation going absolutely nowhere, I decided it was time for me to go pay the house a visit. Lo and behold, I pull up, $10,000 car and a $2 million community. Yeah. I'm propping up trespassing. Bad, 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 bad. It's a gated community, it's blocked off by big ass gates. Um, it's got the state authority LAC uh, license up on the on the wall, so I'm gonna let this one ride. There's a fine line between repossessing and trespassing. It's not always a win-win situation, but for me, I just play it smarter. I'm gonna get the car. It's inevitable. It really sucks because I really want to get that car today. Luckily, I know just the thing that's gonna cheer me up. Shake your body, baby, do that conga. No, you can't control yourself any longer. Come on, shake your body, baby, do that conga. No, you when we first introduced Zumba longer. here at Mavericks, uh, they were like, well, who's going to teach Zumba? I said, well, you know, we have Tanya and we have Rocky. I've been teaching the Zumba classes here at Mavericks since we've been here, since day one. Tanya's really great at Zumba, but Rocky kills it. My name is Raquel. I go by Rocky. I am the gym mama. <laughs> Every once in a while, Maverick will jump in and do Zumba, and it's really entertaining. If I'm going to sell something, i got to practice what I preach. Maverick is terrible at Zumba. <laughs> Maverick does what he has to do to stay with the motions and stuff, but it's a lot harder than people think. What i found is a lot of men, especially the fighters, are really tight in their hips. Zumba should be a key part of any fighter's training. It loosens the hips and gives you quick kicks. So I have a son. His name's Xavier, and today's Xavier's birthday. So I haven't seen him in over a month. So I'm really excited about uh, giving him a call and uh, having him come see his dad for his birthday. Hey, X. Happy birthday, son. You know, it's your weekend with your dad. During the course of the conversation with him and his mom, he relayed to me that it was gonna be too far of a drive to come see his dad. What do you mean it's too far? Who told you it's too far, your mom? For him to tell me that, <laughs> that it was too far um, really made me question what I've been doing and, and who I am and what's truly important to me. We have a good birthday, okay? So instead, I spent the day watching uh, uh, home videos that I took of him and just realized that, you know, how fast eight years can go by. Being so far away and wanting to give so much of myself to him because that's my blood, that is my son, you know, that's me, that is Maverick. 